He got a clip from the Kansas City Chiefs voluntary workouts from Rashi Rice. The first clips that came out since the incident, we're going to see him work out, run some routes. It's a quick clip, a few different plays, a few different drills, but we get a look under the hood. And this is kind of new here because we usually do not see clips from the voluntary workouts. Usually it starts around rookie camp and it moves on throughout the offseason. But now teams are starting to post their voluntary workout clips. We're starting to see those more on social media. So we're going to start covering those now. We're going to take a quick look at Rashi Rice. But before we do that, you need to click that subscribe button right now. Because we're covering these behind-the-scenes workout clips. Especially once rookie camp hits all day this offseason. Especially training camp, mini camp. But here's Rashi Rice. We have 11 seconds of clips here. It's cinematic. Also in black and white. I don't know why they did that, but it's here. And it's officially at the Chiefs because I can tell by the background there's some other clips floating around of some other players. 11 seconds. Let's roll with it. Let's see what he's working with. Boom. Showing the feet. Showing the short area quickness. Breaking off routes. Looking good. Again, ball's hitting him in the hands. Again, quick three clips. 11 seconds. Very assertive, in and out of his break, strong hands, looking solid. So we'll go over again, but I want to talk about him. So I did a video a while back saying he was stupid for the incident, which was very stupid. But on top of that, I don't expect him to have a huge negative effect for the long term of his career. I just don't expect that. I'm not too smart on the law or anything like that. So I don't know. I can't give you any absolutes, but I expect minimal... Damage to his career, light suspension, heavy fine, no suspension, heavy fine, whatever it is. But with Rashi Rice, I think the main thing is this team's going to look at their depth chart, what the other wide receivers did last year. They're going to be looking at him and what happened and what it would be like if he wasn't there. And they're looking at this wide receiver class that's super deep and you can catch wide receivers on the cheap this year that are very talented in the draft. And they're going to be like, hey... Maybe we got to put a more emphasis on this. Maybe we got to look more at these wide receivers. I would not be surprised because nonetheless, they probably should be looking at these wide receivers anyway, but they're probably putting more emphasis on it now at this wide receiver class. And prior to the Marquise Hollywood Brown, for sure they were. They may bring in a wide receiver and it may not be good enough to really impact the targets or his workload, but... It could impact him long term if they keep playing money ball with the wide receiver position. And things like this could allow them to do so. Especially if we keep getting drafts like this at the wide receiver spot. Where it's like 20 deep at the wide receiver position. Pick your poison. If they develop, you're good to go. And you just keep playing money ball with the wide receivers. This is a very deep wide receiver class. They could be doing that. But when I think of Rashi Rice, I think he's going to be okay this year next year and really it's up to him going forward he can turn it around i think he's going to be okay i don't think it's going to be much of an impact but i think this draft might hurt him on the top end financially because they may not have to re-sign him later they may have a bunch of good wide receivers and they may be like hey we're just going to keep playing money ball because it's working we're going to keep drafting second round wide receivers hit on every other wide receiver that we go through and go with that we'll sign a wide receiver here and there we'll keep playing money ball because that's what they've been doing that might be happening where he was stepping in as a rookie and he was doing good he's got to step up this year he's got to really prove his worth he was really starting to last year a good end of the back end of the season for fantasy football i don't look at him being a, really a buy i look for him being a hold i don't think anybody's really coming off him for as cheap as advertised. Realistically, if you can catch him for a second or something like that, oh yeah, all day long. All day long, but it ain't happening. Like I hear the news and someone starts throwing me those cheap offers, I'm not dealing him away. I'm not dealing him away. I know what I got here, and I know the odds of nothing happening and me holding him and me still getting this production. And what's me getting these picks here and this 10% hit rate, 5% hit rate stuff. I have a better hit rate of playing with the law here with Rashi Rice. I'm not moving on from him. I see a lot of other people talking him up in fantasy like, oh, he's a buy now. He's a buy now. I mean, you can shoot the offers. 
You can shoot the offers in fantasy. Good luck. Good luck you playing with anybody cerebral. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Do I play my chances with this draft pick 5 to 10% or just play the chances with the law and the judicial system? I, I think I'd rather play with that. I think I'd rather play with that because I know he's going to have Patrick Mahomes. I know I'm going to have a couple more years. That's what I'm thinking there. And I know everybody else is saying the same thing. I know everybody else is thinking the same thing. No one's coming off mid-second round picks. No one's doing that. No one's coming off the first. He's a hold. He's probably going to have to be sold in much bigger deals in fantasy for him to be moved. If he's going to be moved. But I'm not coming off him. I'm not worried about him. If he gets a suspension, he's probably going to be a little cheaper. But it's not going to be long enough for it to really impact his value. We've seen this before. And if it does, you catch it on a discount. You submit those offers. He catches a suspension, of course, kick the tires, try and get him. But the odds of that manager coming off of him, not very good. Not very good. Rashi Rice is a hold, hold steady, hold pat. I think he's going to have a long career. I think he's going to be good. But he might have kicked himself in the top end of the salary, though. That might have happened. That might have happened with his career with the Kansas City Chiefs. And I'm talking three, four years down the road when it comes to the extension time. He's really going to have to ball out and really prove that he's in the top 10% of the league. He's really going to have to prove himself with that because we're going to continue to get good wide receivers. They're going to be looking at a bunch of cheap wide receivers next weekend at the draft. They can pluck any one of those and get a lot of competition there. And even if Kelsey goes, they keep bringing in competition and they're seeing this roster and then they just visualize this roster without you on it. And they're like, hell, we got to get more wide receivers in. We can't live like this. I don't know if you want that competition. That competition might be enough to impact you. You never know what's coming around the horizon. That's the thing about that. That's what hurts you with that. But when it comes to fantasy, try to get them. But I don't think it's going to happen. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.